Shalom, shalom. Sisters, waiting on Kenzie and Fallon to get on here. We're going to be talking about forgiving ourselves and not letting our sins and past, you know, things we did in the world weigh us down. And it's true. Um, I'm going to give them a couple seconds to get on. Lord willing. Lord willing, my music isn't too loud. Okay, there's Fallon. Hold on. Ooh, it's been a minute. Okay, there we go. Shalom, right. shalom. All the sisters joining. So we got one. Why is not doing it? Oh, okay. Shalom. Um, <laughs> so, just waiting on Ken. Let me see if I can send a request. It's my fan loud. I kind of don't. <laughs> you and the fan, right? It's. I don't know why it's hot in my room all the time. Put the air conditioning now. Exactly. Like, she only does it when we're about to go to sleep. And it's like, what about during the day when I'm suffering? Actually, y'all, I forgot to write down my precepts. You forgot to write them down? Oh, <laughs> yes. Come on now. <laughs> get that while he's on FaceTime. Bro, y'all was rushing me. <laughs> that was, that, okay, that was kind of Kinsey. I remember <laughs> on my head saying that. All phrases, I remember most of them. Yeah. That's good. Uh, 16 and one of them. Oh, well, 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 Second Chronicles. Wait, Second Chronicles? Second Chronicles what? You got my precept, bruh? I got one in chapter six and one in um Ken, join. I I I um I opened it but I didn't read the one. It says you're unable to join. I got um I got a precept in chapter six and I got one in chapter seven. Shalom. First of all, um, one of all praise on glory to the most high. First of all, wasn't nobody rushing you? You should have been had your precepts, Miss Ma'am. Bruh, y'all, y'all was rushing me. We y'all was rushing me because we were supposed oh. to get on that 10. We were supposed to get on that 10. <laughs> Ken act like she just can't stay up all of a sudden. <laughs> but it's First okay. Of all, let me tell you something. I have my precepts at 2 p.m. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, that's fine. I have mine too, but I, you know you what? You should have been wrote your precepts down. <laughs> it's the Lord so dealing. Like, is the Lord dealing with arguing <laughs> on the Shabbat? Come on now. Do not try to blame that on me, Miss Ma'am. Okay, well, I'm crying. Y'all funny. Show them. I'm sorry, y'all, that y'all have to see that. Y'all. <laughs> um. Oh, Shalom, yeah. Kiara. Okay, let me put it in. Y'all let me know y'all gonna be ready. Oh my gosh, here she go. Mom, everybody, all praise to the most high. Yeah, Lord willing, y'all had a beautiful Shabbat. Yes, the ma'am. The bot was restful. I mean, sleep was. I need more rest like that because I'm tired. Shalom, shalom. (coughs) All right. So, um, I'm going to go on pause real quick. (laughs) (laughs) Just to go see something. I'll be right back. I'm back. What did I miss? Is you ready, Miss Ma'am? Yes, I'm ready. Cardi, please. All right. Okay. So, if one of y'all want to start it off, I'm going to go. Okay. I'll start it off. So, this is the book of Luke, chapter 9. First of all, we want to give all praise and glory to the Most High, Yahweh, Bahashim, Mashat, Woman like Yahweh. You know, all praise and glory to the Heavenly Father. You know, can't take credit for nothing we do. 
You know, we want to do all things in decent order and through the spirit. And the power of the power of the um, so this is the book of Luke, chapter 9, verse 62. And Yahweh Shah said unto him, no man having put his hands to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of Yahweh. So, you know, once you come into this truth, you know, you, you put your hands to the plow, I mean, you start doing the works. You start doing what's required. You start doing what's required of you as a, as a woman. You know, you, um, I'm trying to like see how to remove all these comments. You see, you, um, you start doing what's required of you as a, as a like woman. You know, you repent, you turn back, you turn back from the wicked ways. You know, you come to the most high, you turn your feet to the lost such commandments and Psalms speak of. You know, you start doing this work in sincerity and then you start to look back. You start to look back on the things you used to do. You start looking back on the old life. You're not fit for the kingdom of Yahweh when you're doing that. So once we come into this true sisters and we have this knowledge and understanding, less with an odyssey and it here. You know, we're not spiritually drunk anymore. We, you know, we, we have the lens to see. We've been blessed through the Spirit, through the power of the Spirit of the Most High, Yahweh, Hashem, Yahweh, We're in this truth. We have this wisdom, this knowledge, and understanding. Now we have this milk. You know, we've come into the truth. We're doing these. We're doing the works now. We don't have. We're, we're in. We're not. We don't have time to keep looking back. You know, we're in the times right now when we need to be gearing up our lawns. We're not in the time to be looking back right now. You know, and um. You know, once you come do this, once you come to this truth and you start doing the work, putting your hands to the plow, doing the work. You know, there's no need to look back. Once you start looking back, you're not fit for the kingdom. Because what are you looking back for? You know, the, the, the Most High has already promised repentance and forgiveness unto us. But we know that because the prayer of Manasseh, and I'm going to pull that later through the Spirit of the But we've already been promised forgiveness and repentance. So what is you in the, what is you still dwelling for, looking back on the past? You know, dang, I wish I could have did this. Well, what's done is done, sis. You know, everything happened for a reason. Everything is preordained. And it was, you know, so there's no point of looking back on it. And dwell it on it. You can't go back and undo time. And I know all of us have been there where we feel like, you know, we, um, dang, I wish I would. Well, it's, it's, it's done. We can't go back and undo time. We can't look back. You know, you know, already put your hands to the plow now. You've repented. You've came into this truth now. You're keeping these last sets of commandments now. You're doing the work. You're doing what's required of your is like woman. What are you looking back for? What, what, what is that benefiting you? How is that going to act yourself? How is that going to help your walk with the most high? How is putting your hand to the plow, doing what's required of you? It's like woman coming to do this, keeping these lost sets of commandments, doing the work. How is that benefiting your walk with the most high? How is that profiting you in your walk? How is that profiting your spirit? It's not. It's not. So what's the point? Time. Time. I got a precept for that. So. Right. I got a precept in Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. Isaiah 43, 18 and 19. And it reads, Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a road in the wilderness. So basically, like Ken just said, stop going back to the past. Because when you come into this truth, you your main focus should be what's ahead of you. You shouldn't be reminiscing on what you done did when you was in middle school, when you <laughs> such did something to you, when your ex done cheated on you. Come on out, sis. Why you why you remembering that? Because then now you're remembering the old things. And that's causing spirit. Now you let spirit stop because now you thinking back. You sad, you feeling uh, lonely again. You you reharboring those feelings, and you should not be doing. It. That's that's holding yourself back. And the, the old to come up in your mind again, stumbling block. Now that you're in, the, now in the church, that you're in the truth, that's becoming a stumbling block. You should not be able to be a stumbling block in our life. Due to past things, you have to forget forward. And if you have to pray fast, talk to a sister, seek that counsel, and remember to not allow those spirits to have appointments. Oh. Um, 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 I guess I'll pull this one. Um, this is the book of First John, chapter one and verse nine. Wait, what you say again, sis? First John chapter one, verse nine. Okay. And it reads, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins 
and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we know that we fall short. We know that. And out of the truth. So right here, John is just saying, like, you know, we got to come to the most high, humble ourselves down, admit that, you know, hey, I'm at I did that in third. But we can't be dwelling on it because, you know, how he's faithful. And he forgives us for our sins, cleanses us from righteousness. That's why I got to daily and make sure that we're there and not willingly going off. Kind, kind. Um, I'm going to grab this real quick. Great point, Kaya. Um, hmm? Oh, kind. Uh, this is the prayer of Manessa. Hold on. I'm not going to read the whole thing. I just want to grab some real quick. All right, so I'm going to just read out of the prayer of Manessa. My, by the way, this is a very yappa prayer. Like, yeah, I recommend saying this, you know, at the beginning of the day and uh, at the end of the day. Um, uh, so sundown. Okay, let me just put this out. <clears throat> Thou, O Lord, according to thy great goodness, has promised repentance and forgiveness to them that have sinned against thee. And of thine infinite mercies has appointed repentance unto sinners that they may be saved. Thou, O there, thou, though, therefore, so like, O Lord, that art the God of the just, has not appointed repentance to the just as to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which have not sinned against thee, but thou hast appointed repentance unto me that I'm a sinner, for I have sinned above the number of the sins of the sea. So, like I said, prayer, Vanessa. <clears throat> so, like, you. beautiful, beautiful prayer. But, you know, the Most High has promised repentance and forgiveness to us already. So why, like I said earlier, like what benefit and profit is it doing in your walk with the Most High? What benefit and profit is it doing to your spirit when you're dwelling on the past, you're dwelling on the things you used to do or the world? You know, dang, I wish I could have did this. You know, everything happens for a reason. Everything is pure. Dang, you can't go back and undo time. But the Most High has already promised repentance and forgiveness unto you, sis. He's already promised that to you. You know, he's giving you the chance to repent. We're supposed to repent daily in this thing. We're supposed to die daily in this thing. So the Lord has already promised us repentance unto... unto okay, wait a minute. It's repentance unto uh, forgiveness unto us because we, you know, we've, we've all drank of iniquity in the world. We was all doing wickedness, folly, madness, vexation, spirit. And we still do wickedness daily, knowingly and unknowingly. He's, so that's why we still need to repent and still need to confess because ain't nobody <clears throat> ain't nobody white clean right now. You understand what I'm saying? So, you know, the most has already promised repentance and forgiveness unto us. So what good is it you what good is it doing you dwelling on it, you know, having trouble forgiving yourself and things of that nature? It all comes with prayer and growth, but something the Lord already promised us. The Lord has forgiven you for it. Why can't you forgive yourself? The Lord has forgiven you for your wicked ways and the Lord has um, promised you that, so why can't you forgive yourself? If the Lord has forgiven you, why can't you forgive yourself? It's not doing you any profit to your walk or to your spirit, constantly dwelling on the things you used to do, the woman you used to be. That's, that's Satan. That's Satan. And I want to get that real quick. Hold on. Hold on. So I can. Hold on. Bring it out. Kyle. This is the book of Second Ezra, chapter 7, and verse 57. And it reads, then answered, for, then answered he me and said, this is the condition of the battle which man that is born upon the earth shall fight. Hey, this is the condition of the battle. We already know that the spirit versus the flesh is the, man, that's the, <laughs> people might, you know, we've learned in uh, Esau history that, you know, the, the battle tea party was the most crazy battle or the battle in this was the most crazy battle. I mean, the flesh versus the spirit is the utmost top terrible like tough battle that's the battle right there you know because we're it's a spiritual warfare we're fighting against the spirit in the flesh so that's the flesh wanting you to dwell in the past that's the flesh you know your spirit wants you to grow and increase in this thing your spirit wants you to be hop in these scripts because the script is our comfort the spirit wants you to increase but the flesh wants you to dwell in the past the flesh wants you to do the things of the flesh the carnal things but the spirit wants us to grow and increase in this thing because we already know the lord already gave our spirit the, our flesh the upper hand so it's our job to give our spirit the upper hand and we do that by being diligent and steadfast and true praying reading fasting things of that nature so like i said it, it doesn't benefit you or your walk it doesn't benefit your spirit not one bit Dwelling on the woman you used to be, dwelling on the things you used to do. And like I said, if, if, if uh, repentance and forgiveness is already promised unto all of us, if the Lord has already forgiven you, then why can't you forgive yourself? 
That ain't nothing but Satan and these spiritual demons wanting you to dwell in the past. That ain't nothing but the flesh. So we gotta, we kind of gotta fight. We have no choice but to fight. We gotta fight these spiritual demons. We gotta fight Satan because this is the battle. This is the condition of the battle. We, it ain't gonna get no easier. It ain't gonna get no easier. This is the condition of the battle. It's not gonna get no easier at all. But it's that's that's just Satan in the in the flesh wanting you to dwell in the past about the woman you used to be and the things you used to do. But this is the condition of the battle. These are the things we gotta go through in this truth. You know, this is the things we have to go through in this truth. Being caught into this truth, these are the things we go through. Everybody in this truth is gonna go through it. Everybody know about went through it. How much I went through it? How much more us we're not greater than our master? The spirit versus the flesh, that's a real tough we and we can't do it alone. It's spiritual warfare out here. You know, so we just kinda get, gotta take it on the chin and kinda enjoy it. This is the spirit of the battle, but Dwelling, dwelling on the things you used to do and the woman used to be and having trouble forgiving so it ain't going to profit you sis we trying to build our spirits up and gird up our Lord so in that, in that day Lord willing when the most when you have a shop return we're in the spirit to call upon the name of him how are we going to be building up our spirits and in the spirit to call upon the name of the Lord in that day Lord willing and we're dwelling by some stuff that ain't going to profit us we're, trying, we're focusing on bigger things we're trying to prepare for that day Lord willing we're focusing on bigger things and focusing on the things you used to do that ain't going to help us in this walk not one bit it's unprofitable it's unprofitable. Uh, I'm done. Sorry. Beautiful. That's right. Oh, please. That was beautiful. I'm praying to the Heavenly Father. Okay, so um, to back up what you saying about repenting, I have Acts 3 verses um, 19. Acts That's 3 weird. verse 19. She kind of slowly pushed up, y'all. That's spirit. I'm sorry. <laughs> That's the spirit. You don't push the spirit. So Acts 3 and 19 reads, Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out, so that times of refreshing may come from the presence of the Lord. So when we repent, he blocks out everything that we did, all the inequities, all the sins, everything that we can think of, even if we don't even know. Repentance is very important because if we don't repent, then what are we doing? You have to forgive yourself. When you repent, the Most High forgives you, but you also in the process of forgiving yourself. So he's blotting all of that out. So if he blotting it out, why are you bringing it up again? Why are you re remembering all of that? If he's saying... I don't re he don't even remember it. So why are you trying to remember it? Mm. So that's what that's basically saying in that precept. Okay. Right. Sure. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna grab this precept real quick. Okay. Um, Look at Acts chapter eight and verse twenty two. Just eating off what she said. Repent thereof of this thy wickedness and pray yet how will it perhaps the thought of thine heart may be forgiven thee. So like Fallon brought up, you know, the Lord blots out our transgression when we repent. You know, repent truly means change. And so when we repent, confess our sins, confess our faults and repent. Because you know that's that precept, you know, what she just pulled out, repent and that, that you may be converted. So you know when you repent, you truly turn away from that wicked deed and you truly change your ways and you truly, you know, start walking the right way. So when you repent and truly change your ways, confess your faults, the Lord forgives you. He blots out your sins. So we need to repent so that we may be forgiven. Now, when we repent, we're forgiven. So like I, like she said, you know, what Sis said, when you repent and the Lord has forgiven you, what is you still dwelling on it for? What is you still dwelling on it for? The Lord has blighted it out. The Lord has forgiven you. What benefit and profit is it doing if you still dwelling on it? Don't let that guilt and that don't let that guilt eat you away. Kai, you should pull that Ezra's piece up. Don't let that guilt eat you away. Don't let your sins weigh you down. Right. This is second Ezra, chapter sixteen, verse. I'm gonna start at seventy four. Okay. And it reads, "Hear, O ye, my beloved, saith the Lord: Behold, the days of trouble are at hand, but I will deliver you from the same. Be not afraid, neither doubt, for Yahweh is your guide, and the guide of them who keep my commandments and precepts, saith the Lord Yahweh." Let not your sins weigh you down, and let not your iniquities lift up themselves. Woe be unto them that are bound with their sins and covered with their iniquities, 
like as a field is covered over with bushes and the path thereof covered with that no man may travel through. So that precept is really a classic. It's pretty much playing upon tables. You know, like Ken said, we need to be focused on, you know, Jacob's trouble, all hell about to break loose, following these lost angels commandments the best we can. We don't have time to be dwelling on stuff that we done did in the past. We don't even think about yesterday. Don't even think about, oh, what we did two weeks ago, a couple months ago, years ago. Especially not. It's always good to examine, but I feel like it's a very thin line between, between examining ourselves better and dwelling on stuff that we especially can't control because it's already happened. And a good way to think about it is just like, I mean, it was going to happen regardless. There's really nothing you could do about it. So, I mean, there, it, there shouldn't be no shoulda, coulda, woulda. But I mean, everything's according to the most high will. So, time. Um, I wanted to get Jeremiah one five real quick because you said that everything, like it was already gonna happen, which is very true. Mm -hmm. Let me get this real quick. Um, before I formed thee in the belly, I knew thee, and before thou camest forth out of the womb, I sanctified thee and I ordained thee a prophet unto the nations. It's like yeah. And like sis said, it doesn't gonna happen regardless. You know, the Most High had already, you know, before. <laughs> You know how crazy that is to think. Like the Lord already knew us. Everything was gonna go through before we was in, in the, before we was even in the womb. He already knew we was gonna be preordained to come into this truth. He already knew, you know, Kyle was gonna wax mighty in this truth. He already knew Fallon was gonna wax he wax mighty in this truth. He already knew Fallon hell was gonna be big. <laughs> he already knew these things. The Lord already knew these things. The Lord already knew these things. He already knew we was gonna meet each other. He already knew we was gonna have that righteous congregation in May. And that was mighty people said. He already knew these things, you know. This is thus said the Lord. He already knew these things. The Lord already knew it was gonna go through these things. The Lord already knew everything was gonna go through. The Lord already knew all these things. So when it comes to dwelling on the things you used to do that old woman used to be, it's no point because it was gonna happen regardless. It was already preordained to happen. This live was preordained to happen. The things coming out of our mouth was preordained to come out of our mouth. Everything's preordained, so who are we? There's nothing we can do. Who are we? There's literally nothing we can do. It was already going to happen either way. You can't get around it. You can't get around it. Uh, we know we've been taught to think like we really, you know, our people love to say, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. I plan to do that. Hey, the, the Lord is going to tell you what you're going to do. This the Lord. This this is we fulfilling the will of the Lord. This this is. This is our lot according to the Lord. We don't get it. We don't get to say, I'm going to just do this. No, we can't make up no decision without consulting the Lord first because everything's already preordained to happen. It's either in his will or if it, or it's not. So everything we done, um, everything we done been through, everything we done dealt with, it was preordained to ha happen. The things you used to do, the wickedness you used to do, sis, it was preordained for you to happen, for it to happen. Like, you know, because I've been in a similar position where, in a similar situation, so like it, where I felt like, dang, like, I really... I wish I would have did that in the world. Like, I, I can't believe I did that. You know, it, like she said, it's a thin line. Like sis said, it's a thin line between self-examining and then just dwelling. You know, it's cool to self-examine. And, you know, that's why we repent. But there's no point of me saying, dang, I wish I would have did that in the world like that. Because you can't do nothing about it. But repent and continue to be molded to that better Islam woman. Continue to be converted. Continue to die daily. Continue to be a renewed, better Islam woman daily. Because it was already going to happen. It was already going to happen. You know, the things we go through, they they, they for our learning as well. The scriptures is for our learning and for our comfort. But the things we go through as well, because we learn from that. We learn from that, we grow from it. You know, that's the only how we move. That's the only how. We, we learn from we grow from it. So, the things you did in the world, since what's done is done. It's in the world for a reason. It's in the past. We're a new woman in this thing now. So, just keep growing to be that better it's like woman, that new woman daily. So, I mean, like I, like she's saying, like, it was already pure day to happen. It was going to happen regardless. There's nothing you can do about it. No point of doing nothing. It's not profitable to your walk. Tell Cardi B to shut up. Oh my God. But that's all I have. Sit. Oh, she right next to you? Oh, let me see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Cardi. <laughs> she aggravating, bruh. She's so cute. You want me to pick her up? When I pick, pick her up, I want her mama. I want to pull, um... Did you just pull that girl by her thing? And do I be pulling her like this, y'all. <laughs> I be jacking her up. You don't need no dog. <laughs> she bad, You don't bro. need no dog, bro. 
but she is bad. You never pulled your precept, the Jeremiah precept. Who me? Yeah, you. It was like Jeremiah five one, right? One and five. I did pull that. I read that. That's what I was just talking about. Ouch. I, I pulled. I read that. Oh, I'm tripping. Well, I got a precept in Jeremiah too. Um, Ver chapter um thirty one. Okay. You said verse 31 or chapter 31? Chapter 31, verse 34. Well, I'll start at 33. And it reads, But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write in their hearts and will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. So this is what we need to be looking forward to. So, I mean, this new covenant is going to come, and all hell breaks loose, and how shy comes back. And, you know, all of our sins are <laughs> erased from the most high's mind. So... In that, in those days, you know, after El Hill breaks loose and your house shy comes back, you know, we don't have the law or parts. We won't have to worry about going on, falling short, being in this wicked, wicked flesh, and just always on edge, trying to fight these spiritual demons and stuff. So we just got to make sure that we're fighting the good fight now. So for like, so we can have that good reward, and you know, Lord willing, we can just examine ourselves and think about the stuff we've done but not dwell on it to make us the better women so that when we continue to um go through our walk as women until you how shy comes back we don't have to worry about like repeating lord willing repeating the same offenses we've been doing so that being said i think i'm gonna pass the torch Not the torch. That's the time. I got presets. I don't know why y'all looking crazy. Hmm? <laughs> I, like, I don't know why y'all looking crazy. Like, y'all ain't got a preset. I'm waiting. I know I was going to let Fallon go. No. Oh. Fallon? Are you talking? Oh. We can't hear you. Dang, that's Satan. Nobody. Can y'all hear me? Uh, okay. I have Proverbs 4, um, 25 through 27. You said chapter 4? Yes. Hi. Chapter 4, verse 25 through 27. Okay. And it reads... <clears throat> Let your eyes look straight ahead and your eyelids look right before you. Ponder the path of your feet and let all your ways be established. Do not turn to the right or the left. Remove your foot from evil. Okay. So, let me go. Okay, so basically, with this precept, I like this precept because. It's very helpful because when you, like um both of my sisters are saying, we have to keep our heads straight and looking back is never beneficial. That's not that's not what the most high wanted for us anyways. He doesn't want us to be in a state where we feel like um we're constantly going back backtracking because in this walk it's about moving forward, growing in this truth making progress and when you're looking on your past you're not progressing at all you're not progressing so for me this scripture hit home because i had a righteous rebuke from the most high one day just two days ago on looking towards the past and i was just like man like when i did that i could literally feel all of those feelings i had and i was like oh no nah. like the most high, re he rebuked me and he was like, you need to repent. So I had to repent for that. And I had texted somebody and I was like, man, like I, 
I should say, I was like, man, like, I really did just get a rebuke, like, and dumb rebukes be hitting hard, though, because when a most I rebuke you, it's, it's worse than your mama just whooping you, because you nope. really sit down and you self-examine yourself, and when you look on the past, you examine the past, money, you examine what's going on ahead of you, so that's what I have for that precept. All right. You can't be right. back, right? Kind of Kind, cannot be doing that. Like, it's okay to, you feel me? Think about like, dang, all praise the most high, you got me out of that situation. I'm not the Kind. person. But we're not sitting in the corner crying. We're not or, hugging our knees and rocking back and forth. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Like, I'm sorry. Like, you know I'm sitting in the shower music. crying. Not finna oh, me, listening to sad music. Right, we're not so listening about to the music. Like, it's no crying. Not profitable. Right. And I want to pull. Um... Dang. Okay. I'm just saying, like, y'all should really read this because I read it earlier and I was like, this is so beautiful. I'm going to start saying this, Lord willing, um, every day. But this is Psalms chapter 86. And um, I'm going to start. The whole chapter is fire. I highlighted the whole thing, but I'm not going to read the whole thing for the sake of time. So I'm going to just kind of skip around. So it says, I'm going to start at verse 1. It says, Bow down thine ear, O Lord, hear me, for I am poor and needy. Preserve my soul, for I am holy, O thou my God. Save thy servant that trusteth in thee. Be merciful unto me, O Lord, for I cry unto thee daily. So with that part, I thought that was my because, you know, we really need to cry to the Lord. We're feeling the work. We got these spirits on us, and we're thinking about what we did. Like, dang, like, I did this, this, and that. Like, I can't believe it. Like, I really don't deserve to be on this, be in this thing. Like, we need to use that as ammunition to go harder. Like, I don't even deserve to be in here. So I need to really be going hard for the Lord because he didn't have to put me in this thing. So you got to, you know, we already know that we're supposed to prepare what we say before we talk to the most likely. How about Shimmy Shai? So we need to make sure that, you know, please. So I, get, I don't know how my phone is already on 20%. But, yeah, we need to be, Lord, crying unto him, please bow down your ear unto a poor servant. Hear my cry. Because we know we're we're poor and needy in this thing. We need how about Shanyash in this world. We can't do it long. So I'm going to skip down to um, verse 5. For thou, Lord, art good. And ready to forgive and plenteous in mercy unto all them that call upon them. And I, that was my favorite one out of the whole chapter, just because, you know, even though the Lord is, you know, giving out just judgments and stuff, we need to just make sure that we realize that, you know, He is merciful, He is faithful, you know, He is compassionate, and He's ready to forgive us. So even though, you know, we're not ready to forgive ourselves for whatever reason. We need to recognize that the Most High has already forgiven us. As long as we're repenting and, you know, sincere about what we did. And Aww. sometimes we have to go through those things. Like, not even sometimes, all the time. We go through the things to keep us humble. Because we never went through those things that were just so vile and wicked. We would be prideful in this thing. We would be like, oh, yeah, well, I know I'm making it to the kingdom. I ain't never did none of that. Mm-hmm. So, you know. The most I already knows that we got to go through that stuff. He just wants to see if you're going to care enough to, you know, give him your supplication unto him. So I'm going to skip down to um, uh, verse 15. But thou, O Lord, art a God full of compassion and gracious, long suffering and plenteous in mercy and in truth. Oh, turn unto me and have mercy upon me. Give thy strength unto thy servant and save the son of thine handmaid. So that's mighty right there because, again, oh. compassion and grace. Like, he wants to forgive us. He wants us to come back to him, be in this thing 144%, go hard for him. You know? You know really? I mean, he's merciful. So it's like, you got to believe, just like how you got to believe, like your prayers are being heard, you got to believe that the Most High really did forgive you for what you did. Praying and fasting. And 
just being sincere again i can't stress that enough being sincere about being sorry about what you did but um, i yield um um i wanted to get um sacred is 5 and 17 real quick and kind of like how i said we need to be humbling ourselves before the lord and crying out his name exalting the lord's name how about you know so it's a real problem to feel like we don't need your help because it's like it, y'all. Because we do. We need your help about Shimon Hawa in this walk. We need him in this walk, you know, and it's real proper to think that we don't. It's real proper to think we don't got to come humbly before the Lord when we pray because we do. But we need to be crying aloud the Lord's name and exalting his name, you know, <clears throat> especially because we've been so wicked. Uh -huh. so we, can, we don't deserve this truth, but you know, this is 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. Therefore, if any man be a Hamashiach, he is a new creature, all things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. So, we're new women in this thing, you know. Um, and I know, like, it can this topic can be so touchy because there are so many things we've done in our past, and we just feel like we're connected to them and we're tied to that stuff we used to do, maybe because of trauma, you know, maybe because of pain, maybe because of so many different things like all of us have our own different lives you know we've all been through different traumatizing we've all been through things we've all been through different things and you know when we think about the things we've done in the world and the things we went through in the world you know we feel like we still have a connection to that old life you get what i'm saying because the things we went through because of the wicked things we have to deal with because of the situations we have to go through unfortunately to get where we are today but we have to know that we're new women in this thing and like kyle was saying um it was gonna happen either way, you know, and like like we're all pushing tonight, like the things we went through, you know, it was to humble us. The things we went through, it was for our learning, you know. How are you gonna be a better Kaya? How are you gonna be a better Fallon? Sis, how are you gonna be a better you if you ain't been through nothing? How are you gonna learn from something and grow if you ain't never been through nothing? You know, you 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 know, um it's a precept and like my Micah, Malachi one or two, but you know, to, to to be, you know, like a diamond. Say for instance, let's just say a penny. Say for instance, a penny, it's not going, a penny not going to look shiny unless it go through the fire. A penny not going to kind of look as good unless it go through the fire. You said what? You talking about the no, gold? No, I'm, I'm not talking about that. No, I'm talking about, it's, it's literally a piece of literally talking about a stone. But I, I don't, I don't even want to, I don't know where book is in. It's in the M book. <laughs> I just don't know. Like, where is that? So, not the M book, but kind of like, a penny not going to be as shiny unless it go through the furnace. But that is, it's all right. A penny not going to be as shiny unless it go through the furnace. So we have to go through something to be better women, right? We got to go through something. So we had to go through things in the world. We had to deal with unfortunate situations, but it was going to happen regardless. You dwelling on it, it ain't going to be profitable to your spirit. You dwelling on it, looking back on it, it's not going to help you or your walk or your spirit at all. So it's no point. We're new women in this thing. Once we've come into this truth, you're renewed through the mind. When you come into this truth, you don't think the same way you used to think. You don't have the same doctors you used to have. You don't have that same outlook on life. You don't think the same. You don't act the same. You don't talk the same because you're new now. You're a new woman in this thing. All the old doctors gone, passed away. The way you used to think, gone, passed away. The thing, the outlook you used to have is gone, it's passed away. You're a new woman in this thing now. So when you come into this truth, as it's like, woman, you're renewed through the mind. You don't think the same. You have a different outlook on life. You move different. That's because you are different. You're a new woman. So what good does it do? What profit does it do? Dwelling in the past about the things you used to do is not profitable. And we got to know what's good for our soul and what's not. It's, a pre it's the precept of Syrac. I let me try to see if I can find it, Lord willing. But we got to know what's good for us. No, I got a whole laptop right here. So like, hold on. Hold on. Give me a second. Huh. But we got to know what's good for our soul and what's not. Hold on. Give me a second, y'all. Bear with me. So that's definitely a tire. Um, I like how she just blocked out the whole camera with the big behind laptop. <laughs> but, Con, like, I like what this was saying. Because, like, honestly, the most I knew everything, like y'all been saying, most I knew everything before we knew. So he he knew that once we got into this walk, we were gonna have those times where we looking through the past. He knew we was gonna have those times where we, you know, cause it's fresh to us. It's something new. It's different. Cause when you go from being in the world to being in the truth, being in the truth, you have a different mindset and different outlook on things. When you in the world, you thinking all of that. You think that's cool. You think it's fun. You think it's good. You enjoyed it. But you still gonna be tempted through the flesh because you just now coming out of that. 
So you gotta give yourself that um time with the most high to be able to cleanse and purify yourself and cry out like you said to the most high. Hmm. This is the book of Sirach, chapter thirty seven and verse twenty seven. My son, prove thy soul and thy life and see what is evil for it and give that give not that unto it. So if you know, you know, you've been doing self examining, you know that dwelling in the past, thinking about the things you should do, you know it's not unprofitable for your soul. It's not I'm gonna tell all each and every one of my sisters right now, it's not profitable to any end of our spirits. We know we know that it's not profitable unto our soul. Then give not give not into it like the Lord is saying, This is thus saith the Lord. If we know it's not profitable to be dwelling in our past, thinking about the things we used to do the one we used to be, but that's not good for our soul, that's not good for our spirit, then don't get into that. And that also goes into not giving your mind over to heaviness. But we gotta self examine this thing and really sit like like Kai said, there's a thin line between self examining and then just dwelling. So dwelling on the woman used to be and the things you used to do, it's not profitable. You know it's not profitable. Then don't give into that. We got to see what's good for our soul and what's not. And, you know, we got to understand what's profitable for our spirit. And that's very unprofitable for our spirit. That's not going to help us grow. That's not going to help us get the kingdom. That's not going to help us endure. It's not going to help us build up our spirit for that day. It's not going to help. So, you know, it's not profitable. Let me get Sirach 30 and 21 real quick and I'll pass the torch. Give not over thy mind to heaviness and afflict not thyself in thine own counsel. Upon tables, don't give your mind over to heaviness. Do not give your mind over to heaviness. No, yes. don't let them demons. Don't let them demons come up on you like that. How you really jump down the drought, playing your favorite sad song in the shower, sitting down crying because you just can't get over the things you used to do. Sis, let it go. <laughs> let it go. Yes, kind. Let it go. Hey, you lay you down bad sitting down in the shower. <laughs> not taking a bath. Sitting down in the shower. Like Kai said, rocking your knees, kind of rocking back and forth. <laughs> Kind of got the bubbles coming out your nose. You just can't, you just can't <laughs> shake it, man. You can't shake Yo, y'all are crazy. We can't be doing. But speaking facts, but you know, just like to bounce off what's just said, like we gotta go through these things, like because these things, not even really low key, high key, they make us wise. Like you know how in the world they're always like. I'm falling out of that already. Show them. Um, but, you know, the world, they'll always be like, oh, girl, you ain't been through nothing yet. And they always be like the 40-year-old auntie and your mama probably done said girl, it. Okay. Like, oh, girl, you ain't been through nothing yet. You think that's something? da 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 da, -da. But low-key, it's kind of true. So, like, you know, when we're babes in this thing, you know, we're not even really going through nothing. We still got lots of tribulation to come. And that's the stuff that we go through. That's just adding more and more wisdom as we go through it, as we go through it. As we come out of that situation, we know how to, how we got out of that situation, how the Most High brought us out of that situation. And when, you know, a sister goes through that same situation, boom, you can be like, hey, that same thing happened to me. And I did this, that, and that. And it helped me endure through this. So everything works together for the for the good, and I'm sure y'all know that precept. I'm sure it's in the New Testament, Romans, or something like that. But all things work together for the greater good, something like that. But I want to pull. Um, let me get. I'm gonna get Second Chronicles, chapter. I don't know if I'm gonna do six or seven. Um, okay, I'm gonna get chapter six first. So, Second Chronicles chapter six, verse thirty, and it reads, "Then hear thou from heaven thy dwelling place, and forgive, and render unto every man according unto all his ways, whose heart thou knowest, for thou only knowest the hearts of the children of men, that they may fear thee to walk in thy ways." so long as they live in the land which thou gavest unto our fathers. So I pulled that one just to kind of give you like a clarification on how the Most High, Most High knows like, you know, when we're dwelling and we're thinking about these things that we've done, he knows that we feel bad about it. He knows it already because he knows the hearts of all of us. Like, that's just playing upon table. He knows all and we know that the, the Lord's eyes is 10,000 or something like that, brighter than the sun. So, we just got to keep that in mind when, you know, we're dwelling on stuff that's in the past. 
that the most high knows that you know we already repented we already confessed our sins to the lord you know we already got counsel on it we already got some precepts from the sisters about it just leave it alone leave it alone kind leave it alone like she said mm -hmm. and i'm are you gonna grab some oh you can go ahead no you go ahead Bro, go ahead. Bro. No, go ahead. Yeah. Go ahead. Bro, because I was just going to pull another priest, so go ahead and say what you're going to say. Go ahead and say what you're going to say. Oh, my gosh. We're not playing tennis, okay? Wait, what you were going to say was going to go with my precept. I'm about to kind of change the subject, so go ahead. Okay, 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 okay. This is the book of Sirach. This is the book of Sirach, chapter 14, verse 2. Blessed is he whose conscience has not condemned him, who has not fallen from his hope in the Lord. So the Lord is saying, blessed are you that's not letting your conscience condemn you. You know, when we be dwelling in the past, thinking about the things you used to do, can't let it go. You're letting your conscience condemn you. What's the point? You're letting your conscience condemn you. But the Lord is saying, blessed are you that don't let your conscience condemn you. So, you know, when you dwell about the past and the things you used to do, man, I wish I wouldn't have did that. There's nothing for you to do. It's going to happen regardless. You know, like we said, you know, our, our aunties love to say, oh, you ain't been through nothing yet. You don't, you don't know what life's about. Right. Who ain't been through nothing? Okay. Please, 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 please don't fly on me. <laughs> Who ain't been through nothing? The things we go through is to literally, you know, the things we go through is to strengthen us, make us better. It's like that's First Peter five and ten and Hebrews twelve and eleven. You know, it's to and ten. It's our profit. It's for our profit. You know, how you gonna how you gonna learn if you ain't never been through nothing? How you gonna grow if you never been through nothing? So we're gonna go through things. We're gonna go through things. <clears throat> uh -huh. But blessed for you that don't let your conscience condemn you. You know, blessed for you that's not kind of in your head, letting letting that letting that thought beat you up like I shouldn't have did this. I should It's 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 no point. Let it go. So don't let your conscience condemn you in this thing. Don't let that guilt and, and that past weigh you down. Don't don't let your sins weigh you down. You know, you gotta come about that. You gotta fight that demon, rebuke that demon because it's just a demon. It's just a spirit. It's just a spirit. And the Lord always remember. Please keep this in mind. First Corinthians ten and thirteen. I'm just read it real quick. There have no temptation taking you, but such as is common to man. But Yahweh is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation and make a way to escape that you may be able to bear it. The Lord is not going to give you anything or put you in a situation or put a spirit on you that you cannot overcome. These spirits just doing their job. These spirits just doing their job. No, don't nothing, don't nothing, every, everything got to like, these spirits, they listen to the voice of the Lord. No, don't nothing on the, like pass without be, being ordered at the hand of the Lord. Everything is ordered at the hand of the Lord. These spirits just doing their job. So you got to know when you're going through some, when you're dealing with that thought of, you know, you dwelling on the woman you used to be, the Lord ain't put that spirit on you for no reason. The Lord put that spirit on you because he knew you were able to, he knew you'd be able to overcome it. He knew you'd be able to fight it. So take yeah. it on the chin and count it joy a little bit more. You know, count it joy a little bit more. Don't have that walls in the spirit and quit letting that, you know, you we can, at some point, we got to say enough is enough. I'm just being honest. At some point, we got to fight. At some point, we got to get in that ring, whoop them demons, tap us in. Come on, you finna fight D. You finna fight D. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Tap us in, play tag in with them just for real. Because, you know, it's getting real out here. But at some point, you got to be like, enough is enough. I'm whooping y'all back. I'm sick of it. <laughs> I'm whooping y'all back. <laughs> okay. So, you know, Hi. don't don't let, you, you know, bless, just don't let your conscience condemn you. It is what it is. Hi. What's done is done. Let bygones be bygones. Right. Hi. And control I'm, your mind. And control Hi. your spirit as well. Right. Exactly. And make sure that's Hi. really just an overthinking demon, for real. It really is. It's, it's really overthinking real. demon. We and the spirit. Fuck. Hey, spirit. Fallon girl, you and, was humble, my, my good sis. Can you hear me? Yeah, take them little airpods out. <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. Take them out. But I'm gonna take them out for real because I can probably Okay, so I'm gonna pull Ephesians six verses um eleven. The classic. Yes, ma'am. No. And that's the spirit because um, while you was talking, I was trying to find my notes on fighting demons, and I found them. And uh -huh. I was like, because I got a bunch of precepts on that. And I can't find my precepts on the spirit of heaviness, so um, whenever I get those, I can send them to y'all if y'all don't have any. Uh -huh.
So Ephesians um, verse 11 says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wills of the devil. So just like this said, when you're in that ring, have that armor on. And the full armor, we already know, is um, swap it out. Okay. Is the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, belt of truth, the the breastplate of righteousness, shield of faith, and the shoes of readiness. So you gotta be ready. When those spirits coming up on you, you can't just be sitting around like, oh my gosh, my spirits on me. Oh my gosh, they attacking me. Okay, if they attacking you, what you gonna do? You gonna sit there and you gonna you gonna cry and mumble and grumble and be sad, or you gonna get up and fight? So that's what we have to do. We have to fight because the most high teaches us this book right here. This is our sword. This is how we fight off the demons. When you read this, you understand it, you live it daily, and you have the lost in your heart. He's preparing us to fight off these spirits. He didn't give us this to just sit around and grow get done. He wants us to pick it up and read it. And I forgot what I was going to say, but yeah, you have to fight this. Don't be scared to fight these demons because nothing is too much for the Most High and nothing is too much for you. The Most High did not give you a spirit. He did not give you. He gave us a spirit power, a power, a love, and a sound mind because when our forefathers and foremothers, when they were going through stuff, they went to war. It was not planned. They was not planned with it. Like, I'm going to, I'm going to, you know what I'm saying, put, some, put these on you real quick. We got to put, we got to, we got to put these, like how y'all, you know, put them on them. You know what I'm saying? Don't, don't be scared. Because it's, that's a spirit of fear on you when you act scared. And most high scares you. Do we serve a speak? A, uh, our father is not like that. He's going to go to war. Uh, He's going to go to war. Right. That's right. And, so, Put on the girds, gird up your loins, put on that full armor of the most high. Uh -huh. So you can get through these um, demons that's trying to come on you. That's right. That's right. And this, so, this, I'm telling you, this book, it's a two edged sword. And, you know, it, even playing on to uh, that verse that you read, I'm pretty sure like, verse 12 talks about like we fight against uh, the principalities and mm -hmm. just stuff rather than flesh and blood. If, yeah. you was get, if you was getting jumped outside in the parking lot, you're not going to just sit there and let them jump you. I would hope not. And it's you, are, you will be putting in the work. So we need to be, going, right. we need to be acting just like that, even even more, <laughs> even was, more against these spirits. So you need to be putting that helmet on salvation. Think of it as like a football game. I know some sisters like football, so we're going to use that analogy. Helmet of salvation, you got your helmet on. You feel me? The other team is these demons. And there's a lot of them. There's a lot of folks that be on the field. I don't know how many. I don't watch football, but it'd be a lot of folks on the field. Helmet of Salvation kind of got that 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 thing. So when they be, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Yeah, no, it's like a it's like a whole thing that comes like right here and it goes through the. Back oh, you talking about that thing? I was gonna say this girl, that's the breastplate of armor. That's, that's the breastplate. Kind and then yes. that sword. That sword kind of that football. You know, everybody want that football. Everybody want this truth. But that's a beautiful analogy. I ain't gonna lie, that hard. It really is. I'm gonna have to write that down, low key. <laughs> I like hey, that. And the the uh, the cleats is the the feet of what? What does it say? Readiness. Readiness. Yeah. yeah, that's right. So we gotta make sure that we're just thinking mm -hmm. of it like that. Like, you're not gonna get jumped in the parking lot. Somebody is being your behind. You're not gonna. Get, I would pray to the Most High that you would not just sit there and get beat up. So do not let these spirits beat you up. Don't do it. <laughs> Don't do it. So, yeah, I just want to say that. But, um, wait, can I pull a precept? Fine. Of okay. course. All right. So this is Second Chronicles chapter 7, verse 14. And it reads, If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. Now my eyes shall be open, and my cares attend unto the prayer that is made in this place. So that's pretty much praying on tables. So we gotta humble ourselves down. 
before you have Hashem, y'all. Shall I pray, seek the Most High as much as we can before it's, it's too late. Seek him while he can be found. And, you know, that's a precept. I forget where it's at, but y'all know it. And and he's, it says right there, plain upon tables, word for word, will forgive their sin. I yield. Um, um, I want to grab something real quick. John three sixteen. For Yahweh so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. The Most High sent his only begotten son, Yahweh Shah. He sent his only begotten son, Yahweh Shah, so Yahweh Shah would die for our sins. Yahweh Shah died for us. It's, that's in, um, no, Yahweh Shah, Hamashiach Yahweh Shah, he died for us. He died for our sins. So what are you still dwelling on the sins you did for? <laughs> he died for our sins. He died for us. So we got to, you guys don't need to, you know, the most high sin is only begun saying how it's not to go through it for us. To go through it for us. You know how much you got to love somebody to send your only begun son for them? Okay. The most high, how about you, how should I love us? You know, we've been forgiven and, and forgive for the things we used to do. So we need to just let it go. There's no point of dwelling on it. The most high sent you how it's not to forgive, you know, that was. Most of us say it's only begun son to go through it for us. So what are you dwelling on it for? Let it go. It's not profitable. Let let it go. Just like Elsa said, let it go. Let it go. <laughs> let it go. And let me get let me get my last piece up in there. Yeah. This first Maccabees twelve and nine. Okay, that's the spirit because it landed right on the page, okay? Um, therefore, we also, albeit we need none of these things, for that we have the holy books of scripture in our hands to comfort us. So we got this, we got the beautiful Apocrypha, we got big juicy Bible right here, but together makes the 1611. Ooh. We got the 1611. These scripts is here to comfort us. These scripts is here to, mo to, to, good for our edification. When we know, we got to know, let me get this real quick. So like, y'all, yeah, hold on. I'm sorry. This yeah. is the last one for real. This is the book of Numbers, chapter 23, and verse 19. Bring that up. And it reads. It reads. Yahweh is not a man that he should lie, neither the son of man that he should repent. Has he said, and shall he not do, or has he has spoken, and shall he not make it good? So when we think about these scripts, we got to know everything the Lord has said will come to pass and has come to pass. The things that he spoke that has been prophesied, that has happened. Everything else he spoke is going to happen. We got to know that these scripts is true. Everything in this Bible is true and it's good for edification. It's good in our learning. We got to have faith in the Most High Habashim al and also have faith in these scripts and know that it's good for our learning and good for our edification. These scripts are here to comfort us. These scripts are here to help us get through troubling times. This this Bible is the blueprint of life. These scripts is here for us. So lean on the script when you're going through it. Don't get your mind over the heaviness. Don't let the, your conscience condemn you. Instead, Put on the whole arm of the Most High, Yahweh Hashem Hashem. Get in these scripts and fight these demons. That's what it's for. These scripts are here to comfort us. The Most High bless us with this for no reason. It's here to comfort us. It's here so we could be edified through the spirit. It's good for edification. Let these scripts comfort you when you're going through it. Not a bottle, not tears. Let these scripts comfort you because that's what it's here for. Oh. Can I pull Philippians um, 3 and 8? Of course you can. Right. Is it three and eight? I'm sorry, four and eight. Sorry. sorry. <clears throat> Bring it out. And it says, finally, brethren, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, whatever things are pure, whatever things are lovely, whatever things are of good, report. If there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on those things. So he just told us, plain up on tables, all the good things. Meditate on that. Uh -uh. Don't, don't be sitting around meditating on your past. Because now you're going against the script. You're going against the most high. He wants us to always meditate on the good things because that's what's going to keep our spirit up. That's what's going to keep us... Um, Keep our minds steadfast and in shoot when we we focus on the good things.
focus on the fact that you got a good sisterhood. Focus on the fact that you you got people that's like minded like you that have been through things, but you can go to them, you can talk to them, they can uplift you. Don't be meditating on people in the past because they obviously weren't benefiting you in that time. But now, most I said, I'm gonna take you away from that and I'm gonna give you something better. So meditate on those things, all the good things in life, all your accomplishments. You you reading um a new book every day. You get in your word. You stay prayerful, fasting. Meditate on all of those things, not on the things of the past that you are dwelling on that could potentially bring you a, bring spirits upon you that are unrighteous. Uh -huh. That's mighty. That's very mighty. Um, you come to righteous stuff. My, my sisters, man, I'm telling you. No, stop. That's y'all. That's y'all. Man, that's that's y'all. Nah, bro, don't. I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna get my tennis racket. Right. No, for real. I wish I had one for real, so I could just hold it up. Every time, I, every say, no, nah, that's you. I'm just gonna do like this. That's y'all, bro. That is y'all. Whatever. I'm gonna pull uh, Psalms chapter 25, and let me get verse uh, 18. Okay, ready? Oh, so I can. Okay. You good? Okay. You said 25 verses 13? Verse 18. Verse 18. Okay, kind. Got it. All right. And it says, look upon mine affliction and my pain and forgive all my sins. So, you know, I just like that one just because, you know, Psalms really just good when you're going through it. So, you know, you kind of have that overthinking demon on you. You kind of think about stuff you done did in the past. Just read a song. Read a couple songs. All of them are fire, to be honest. And we can incorporate these scriptures into our prayers. I mean, that's what they're here for. I mean, David, he was a mighty, mighty man for the Lord. He has some mighty psalms in here as well. So we need to just use use our resources, you know, and cry unto the Lord. You know, ask for that forgiveness. And, you know, ask the most high to look upon our, our pain and our affliction so he can get us up out of that thing. And then I want to get... Um, another account in Syrac. I thought this was really pretty. I read it today. It's chapter 18. And I'm going to start it. It's like, yeah. Uh, I can't count. Oh, there it is. Alright, I'm going to start at verse 20. And it says, before judgment, examine thyself. And in the day of visitation, thou shalt find mercy. Humble thyself before thou be sick. And in the time of sin, show repentance. Let nothing hinder thee to pay thy vow in due time. And defer not until death to be justified. Before thou prayest, prepare thyself. And be not as one that tempteth the Lord. Think upon the wrath that shall be at the end. In the time of vengeance, when he shall turn away his face. When thou hast enough, remember of the time of hunger, and when thou art rich, think upon the poverty in need. So, I like that account just because, you know, before, you know, how Shai comes back, we need to be examining ourselves and making sure that we're as blameless as possible, giving alms, you know, helping our sisters, giving counsel, doing as much as we can to, you know, blot out our sins and making sure that, you know, he don't, how Shai don't say them words, depart from me, I never knew you. And nobody wants to hear that, I'm sure. So we just need to be keeping our mind. Instead of thinking about stuff we did in the past, we need to be keeping our mind on what's coming. About the wrath that's about to wreak havoc on this whole earth. So we need to make sure that we're thinking about what we're going to be praying for. Praying for the right things. Praying for um, our mind to be steadfast on righteousness. Rather than folly and stuff that's unprofitable like Ken was saying. And I want to um, pull this one again. Um, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do 27. A wise man will fear in everything, and in the day of sinning, he will beware of offense. But a fool will not observe time. Every man of understanding knoweth wisdom, and will give praise unto him that found her. So, with that being said, we're just talking about wisdom. So, being wise, we know. 
not to dwell on stuff that gonna we know is gonna make us go down that path to be sad and depressed and just not feeling good in the spirit. So we need to make sure that we're offending less because when we give our mind over those things, you know, the most I do like that. All in all. And you know, we're not we're trying to please him as much as we can. We can't please him if we're instead of falling lost at his commandments, we'll be over here worrying about stuff that happened two years ago. A month ago. Like stuff like that. And one more thing I've done. One more thing I'll pass the torch. Okay, this is verse 30. And it says, Go not after thy lusts, but refrain thyself from thine appetites. If thou givest thy soul the desires that please her, she will make thee a laughing stock to thine enemies that mal malign thee. Take not pleasure in good cheer, neither be tied to the expense thereof. So I like that because really it's a lust of the flesh. Like, our flesh wants us to be sad. Our flesh wants us to be depressed, down and out, feeling bad for ourselves. What was me, spirit, all that. So we need to make sure that we're giving our spirit the upper hand, killing off the flesh. Can I eat? Uh, kind of, I'm just going to eat off what she said real quick. Um, kind, of, first of all, yeah, it is. A, it's just the flesh. Like, I pulled earlier, 2nd, 7 to 57, just a condition of the battle, the spirit versus the flesh. We are to know that the spirit is contrary to one another. I'm going to get that in Galatians chapter 5 and verse um, 17. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary the one to the other so that you cannot do the things that you would. The spirit and the flesh is already going against each other. It's a fight. You could literally fight one another, if only. You know, so it's just the condition of the body. Your flesh wants you to be down and out and sad. Your flesh wants you to do these things. And like Kaya said, just literally even what she said, she made beautiful points. You know, uh, we need to be doing everything we can to please the most high. You know, walking walk in blameless as possible. And I want to get this in Philippians 1 and 10. That you may approve things that are excellent, that you may be sincere and without offense to the day of Hamashiach. So we need to be worried about walking without, without offense. Walking as blameless as possible in the eye of the Lord making sure our slate is as clean as possible. We can't do that if we're worried about things that are old, you know, things that's in the past, dwelling on the things used to be. We need to be focused on building our spirits up for in that day, walking without offense, worrying about walking without offense. We need to be like a felon pool, you know, thinking upon things that are pure, righteous, just, and lovely. Thinking about the things used to do, you know, that, oh, it's, no, it's not profitable. It's not profitable. Yeah. Uh -huh. I got Mark 11, verse 25. So I know we're talking about forgiving ourselves and moving on from the past, but um, we also have to forgive people from our past as well. So that's a, that's the one that we got to do. Because if how can we not forgive them but expect the Most High to forgive us? And try to forgive us. That's the spirit. So that's what Mark 11, verse 25 is basically talking about. So it says, and whenever you stand stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him, that your Father in heaven may also forgive you your trespasses. See that? That's basically what he's saying. That's what he's saying. Forgive your brothers, forgive your sisters, forgive whoever, no matter what they did to you, forgive them, because that's going to set you free as well. Uh, all praises if you switched it to that because I was both keeping to just get into that. <laughs> that that really does play a big part in uh, forgiving it us. Like, you know, we expect the most how to forgive us. We gotta forgive others. And you know, you should just want to forgive yourself, you know. Nobody wants to feel bad, you know. So you gotta we gotta believe that the most high is not gone. And hope that the most high is not gonna hold it against us and make sure that we're doing our best. Like I got a precept for that, what she pulled for uh that's Matthew six and fourteen and it reads um, Oh sorry. <laughs> I was gonna say for oh, if, you read it, but I have it written down. Oh you do? Can't see that's spirit. That's a spirit. So it says, But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your father forgive your trespasses. Oh, that was fifteen, so I give. 14 says, for if ye forgive men your, their trespasses, your heavenly father will also forgive you. Both of them is really 14 and 15. They go together. So, that's a mighty point to bring out. We definitely gotta forgive others so we can forgive ourselves and get forgiveness from the most high, which is what we ultimately want. Um, 
That is facts. Can uh, I want it to get. Oh, go ahead. What you get? I'm gonna get Syrac chapter twenty-eight. Okay. In verse one. Okay. He that revengeth shall find visions from the Lord, and he will surely keep his sins in remembrance. Forgive thy neighbor the hurt that he have done unto thee, so shall thy sins also be forgiven when thou prayest. So, you know, when you, if you, since we're talking about, now we're, we switch it to the topic through the Spirit, our praises of, you know, we got to forgive people from our past as well. So, you know, you might, you might be still pressed about a situation that happened in the past. Lord willing, you not, because you need to let it go. Pray on it, let it go. You might be pressed about a situation in the past, man. They did that to me. Oh man, you know you gonna be, you might feel some type of way. You know you pressed about a situation that happened in the past. Now you want to find you want revenge yourself. But the Lord not dealing with that. This is thus says the Lord. If you find if you're trying to get business from yourself and you want to avenge yourself and you want um you want revenge, the Lord gonna keep your sins in remembrance. So while you over there dwelling on the past situation, you ain't forget that person from your past. You want to try to you plot on revenge. The Lord is gonna keep everything you did in remembrance, and you don't want that. Forgive your neighbor for the hurt you have done to you. So when your so shall thy sins also be forgiven when thou prayest. You want your sins to be forgiven when you pray, right? But how is that ever going to happen if you don't forgive the people that has wronged you? Uh-huh. One man beareth hatred against another, and doth he seek pardon from the Lord? He show up no mercy to a man which is like himself, and doth he ask forgiveness of his own, of his own sins? So the Lord not going to show mercy to you. You don't show mercy to the people that have wronged you. The Lord not going to forgive you if you don't forgive those people. Playing upon tables, there's no way around it. There's no if and buts about it. There's no but, uh, but, this. there's no but. There's no if right. and buts about it. If you don't forgive the people that have wronged you, if you don't forgive people, if you don't show mercy to them, then you're not going to be forgiven. If you want if you want to get revenge on yourself, then your sins are going to be remembered. So if you want to be forgiven, if you want the most out of blood at your transgression, you need to look in the mirror, examine, and forgive everyone that has wronged you. You ain't even got to do it for them. Do it for your walk with the Most High. Do it for your spirit. Do it because that's your walk with the Most High. You got to account for that on Judgment Day. Do it for the right reason. Um, so I just want to bring it out because it's playing upon tables. If you don't forgive others, if you don't show mercy to others, the Most High is not going to forgive you. Period. It's it's thus said the Lord. It's in the sixteen eleven. It's in Matthew. It's in Mark. It's in Sirach. It's in all these different books. All these different accounts showing you the same thing. So there's no way to get around it. And the Lord not dealing with opinions. The Lord not dealing with how you feel. I don't care about how you feel. The Lord not dealing with how you feel. I just does said the Lord. I go by what the Lord says. The Lord say you need to forgive others and you need to show mercy in order to be. Hey, it's, it's that simple. How you feel? Uh, hey, I don't, I don't know if to tell you about how you feel. I'm sorry. I don't want to. Um, you got to think about it. Like, you got to think about it, like what's more important? You harboring all that hate inside of you when you could just forgive them. Like, is right. it more important you feeling like you giving this one up on this person because they did you wrong, or getting mercy from the Most High? The Most High got everything. Who controls everything and can do that person way worse than you could ever do them. So. You just got to keep that in mind and just weigh out what's important to you. Now, if it's more important to you to keep that in and hate that person and feel the type of way forever till the day you die, take it to the grave, whatever the case is, that's on you. It couldn't be me, but. Because as sisters, we really have to bear these fruits. Like, you not bearing no fruits if you walking around with malice in your heart. You uh, not in your heart. Because most how it even tells that he is he can forgive. And you know how much stuff Israel has done? Okay. You know how much he done did? And the Most High could have wiped us out. And he, all the stuff that we did as a whole. Sisters, all the stuff that you've done. And Most High really could have said, psych, I'm going to take you out of here. But he said, you know what? I'm going to give you I'm gonna give you another chance. You mm-hmm. came, came back to me, I'm going to forgive you. So what we look like, keeping them feelings inside of us. And then also, it's making you bitter on the inside. Now you don't, you somebody done did something to you now you don't forgive now you got trust issues all that other stuff and now you holding up now you got a guard held up you got a fence up against other people that ain't even done nothing to you and you taking that hurt, hurt people hurt people and when you walk around hurt you hurt other people that have not hurt you so that's why the most high tells us to forgive uh-huh. like it's some people be and some people use it as an excuse, like, oh, it's hard to forgive. That's not really an excuse. Like it can be hard to forgive people, but you gotta put that pride to the side. Let that pride go. But let that pride go and go ahead, call your brother, 
call you sister and tell them, look, um, even if you don't even feel like you got those feelings inside of you, even if you feel like you don't have unforgiveness in you, call them and be like, you know, just talk to them and be like, I don't, I'm not really, I don't feel like I have anything in me, but I just want to let you know that I love you and I forgive you for anything. Because you just, just continue to forgive. It's not nothing too hard for the most high. It's nothing too hard for you. So just forgive your brethren. Uh-huh. Also, um, also like pray on it, like because you know, uh-huh. just pray on it. You pray that the most I put it on you, forget it to forget that person. Pray that the most I put it in your spirit and your heart to forget that person. Because uh, like I, like we always say, everything is at the hand of the Lord. Everything is ordered at the hand of the Lord. Everything is in the Lord's will. So pray that the most I put it on you to forgive that person. And He eventually through the Spirit gonna give it to you because He see you work before He see that you really want it. Also, being realistic, sometimes it's not going to be as easy to forgive others, especially when they never apologize. Especially uh, when they can really give two Fs about what they did to you. Especially when they, they, they really, they truly don't care. They don't see they did no wrong. You will never get an apology for them. I ain't going to lie. It's, uh, it's hard. It's hard. Like, being realistic, sister to sister, yeah. woman to woman, it's hard when you've never got an apology. It's hard when someone has did you so wrong. And you left, you're left with the pain. You left to pick up the pieces, and you've never got an apology. That's where it takes strength, and that's where we remember that all things can be done through Hamashiach and Hawashah who strengthen us. That's where we remember these scripts are here to comfort us. That's where we remember about sisterhood, and sisters are here to bear these burdens with us. That's when we remember these things. That's when we remember all these things. That's when we remember that the Most High is there for us, and anything can be done through the power and spirit of the Most High Hawashah and Hawashah. That's when we remember all these things. I just remember these things. It's going to be tough, but it has to be done, and it will be done. Lord will, through the power and spirit of Yahweh, by Hashem, Hamashem, a woman like Yahusha. It's going to be much harder to forgive someone when you will never receive an apology a day in your life. But that's uh-huh. where that prayer come in handy. These scripts, scripts are all that come in handy. So, uh, that's, yeah. Uh, you just got to count the cost, bro. Count uh-huh. the like, do you just want to harbor and all that hate, malice, like the sister was saying? You know? Like, it takes a lot to hate somebody. It does. And yeah, one is- thing... Oh, go ahead. Fuck you. One thing as sisters, as for women, we have a lot of... We're more emotional. A lot more emotional than men. So we take things sometimes a little bit more serious when it comes to certain things. We kind of like... Emotional, man. Like, we can't help that. We just emotional people like but you still gotta forgive you still gotta like sis said pray about it and i love that she said that because it's so true like you really have to pray because you're not gonna just i mean sometimes some people are different but sometimes you're not just gonna as soon as it happened say i'm sorry it may take a little minute but just continue to pray on it so that you can get that you know Get that courage built up in you to just go ahead and apologize and forgive. Forgive, apologize also for your wrongdoings and also forgive them too. Because uh-huh. we trespass against the Lord way, way worse than what that person did to you. So you just got to first the yeah. biggest thing. You got to count the cost. Like, is it worth? Is it worth my? I don't say salvation, but yeah, salvation. Is it worth me risking? You know, my walk with the Most High, like. You never know. The most I can take you out this thing is because you don't want to forgive. Like, although it is a process and it can be hard, that's where again praying and fasting comes in hand. You know, ask the sister to send you some forgiving precepts. It's not like you gotta be buddy buddy with this person. You just gotta somehow find it in your heart to forgive them, so you can be forgiven for what you did. Come on, perfect think, in this thing. Just think about all the wickedness and follow we've done, and the Lord ain't have to forgive us for that. Just think about all the wickedness. Think about. Think about how much hurt you've caused the Most High. Mm-hmm. Think about the pain you've put the Most High through. Because we was wicked drinking of a nigga. We wasn't keeping his life. Just think about all the wickedness and pain we've caused. Just think about the pain we've caused the Most High. And you you dwelling about you can't forgive somebody because they didn't what stepped on your shoe. <laughs> I mean I know it ain't, I know somebody ain't dealing with something like that, but it, that's how small it is compared to everything we've done to the Most High. That's literally how small it is. The things we've done to the Most High. And as pain as we cause them, it's an ongoing list. But you tripping about something that's this tiny compared to the things we the pain we've caused our Heavenly Father, pray on it fast on it and really let it go. 
Come. Cause the most high much more pain. Much more pain. Definitely. And he's forgiven us. Um, and we don't even deserve it. Sure. We really don't. We really Our righteousness don't. is nothing but a filthy rag. That's right. Ain't nobody better than nobody. Nobody. Um, and don't be that proper sister that don't want to apologize either because most are going to destroy you. Pride go up before destruction. Um, don't be that proper sister that feel like she don't owe nobody no apology. Well, I don't see nothing wrong with what I did, so she doesn't have to get over it. That's wicked. That is all. Don't yes. be a proper sister that feel like she ain't got to apologize. The Lord ain't dealing right. with that. Yep. Like you never did nothing to nobody. Right, like, mm-hmm. girl, well, I don't know what like to tell you. That's just who I, I hate this line. That's just me. That's just who I am. Wicked. That's, that's so folly. powerful. That's so powerful. Madness. Yes. Yes. yes, that is very folly. Evil. That's, so, that that's where so self-examination comes from, because nobody's better than the next. Nobody's better than the next. It just comes with self-examination for real. Every day we need to do pray. Paul said, Paul asked the most high to make him the lowest of them all. Pray that to make the most high makes you the lowest of them all each day. Cause ain't nobody better than the next. Trust me, we, we ain't nobody better than nobody. We gotta be humble in this thing. We can't be having that prophet spirit. Or be that prophet sister feeling like you don't owe nobody no apology and you ain't gotta apologize. Miss Bad Boosie. Yeah, I'm gonna stop right there. My bad Boosie. I'm <laughs> right there. I was trying to hold it in because I knew where that was going. <laughs> but, yeah, that's, that's I don't have any more. Pre- probably be when you be talking and you just be thinking and you just be like, "Bro, I need to, we need to, I can't stress this enough." And you just start saying stuff. You like, "Let me just chill," because I'm really gonna get heated trying to express yeah. this. Turned up this hard headed now. Yeah. <laughs> you Y'all huh? Your hair wraps cute. Thank you. Oh, crazy. Okay. the most high. I slept with this on and it didn't even come off. Oh, wow. That's crazy. The head bed. Okay. She always, you don't see how she always try to do this and then we on live. <laughs> she disrespectful with it. Can't even do it in private. So, all y'all watching, this is the real. This is the real so, king. This is what goes on. This is no Facebook. We really act like this in person. Like, and Fallon moved across the country. Girl, you like to go. Girl, Kinsey, Houston about to be crazy. You said what? Everybody, I said Houston about to be crazy now. Everybody from Louisiana going to Houston because of Hurricane. Oh, shoot. Crazy. Well, huh? I'm in quarantine. How about it? My dog would not know. <laughs> I mean, I, I live under a rock. Yeah. So. I'm crying. <laughs> but there's no telling how long this live is. So, again... Sister, if you made it this far, you are real, and we love you. I'm going to upload it on my YouTube, so Lord willing, if nobody was able to tap in, it's going to be on the YouTube, Lord willing, tap in there. And Lord May- willing, say- how she's talking about me. Edit that out. Yes, <laughs> Miss Ma'am. Lord willing, they say, so she's able to post it. Uh, Lord willing. But the water, the water, we want to give all honor and glory and praises to the Heavenly Father, the one true mighty God of Israel. Love y'all so much. Let us know if we need anything. Hit us up. DM cannot be on here. But you know, she's still readily available if you need to get to her. <laughs> so, okay. I'm going to go ahead and end it. Shalom, shalom. Shalom.